children a happy band, and there'll be no tears in heaven's farewell, no tears, no tears of there was sorrow, and pain will all have flown, and there'll be no tears in heaven's farewell, no tears, no tears of farewell, no tears in heaven will be known. to ponder her all things that this life has brought to view. You know that all will be clearer, clearer, I say one, be dearer, well in hell where all will be made new, and there be no tears in heaven's farewell, no tears. No tears of there was sorrow, and pain will all have flown. And there'll be no tears in heaven's farewell. No tears, no tears of there were no tears in heaven will be no. And there'll be no tears in heaven's farewell. No tears, tears of their sorrow. the Bible say amen. amen. We are thankful to the God of heaven and we are grateful that we have to grace this assembly once again. Right. I am ever so humbled and always uh, when and whenever I am asked uh, to come and render and speak a little while with and on the Word of God. Amen. I'm grateful to H. Clay Williams. I'm grateful to the Lectureship Committee. I am especially thankful for my family. I'm thankful for the family of God here at North Glen House. I commend those brave and great preachers that uh, I can only come and and, and add a little bit more, amen, all right, all right, yes, sir. to what has already been espoused about the first century church amen. in a 21st century world. Amen. I'm not going to be long with the introduction. It's good to see all these great gospel preachers and their wives. Good to see my California comrades, amen, yes. person of David Minor, amen. Brother Hubert Robertson, amen. Brother Judd Evans did a magnificent job. And it's good to see Ellis Lewis, Jr., amen. All the way from La Puente, California. Good to see many of you. Good to see uh, all the gospel preachers that are here at this lectureship. I want to get to the subject at hand. Please turn with me to Acts chapter 19, verses 13 through 20. I want to give a shout out, if you will, amen, amen, to my beloved sister-in-law, Belinda Williams, and her family amen. for being one of the greatest hostesses, amen. amen. Whenever I come this way, boy, I'm overwhelmed with the hospitality of my wonderful sister-in-law and her wonderful family. And I'm grateful and I'm thankful to God for her. In Acts 7, 19, in verse 13 through 20, I just want to read the text and kind of launch off, amen, into this wonderful, inspiring, relevant lectureship Amen. of Churches of Christ. Amen. In Acts chapter 19 and verse number 13, the Bible says, Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, 
took upon them the call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus Christ or Lord Jesus saying we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches and there were seven sons of one Siva a Jew and chief of the priests which did so and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overcame them, prevailed against them, and so they uh, fled out of the house naked and wounded. This was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Verse 18, And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together, burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. Verse 20, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. I want to back up for a minute. I want to emphasize some and one of the verses in this text. In verse 15 of Acts 19, the Bible says the evil spirit answered, that Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? I've been assigned the subject uh, for your consideration this morning. Uh, this afternoon, does the devil know who we are? Does the devil know who? The English transitive verb, K-N-O-W, is a fine briefly, is a perceive directly, to grasp in mind with clarity or certainty. No is a regard is true beyond a shadow of a doubt. To know is to have practical understanding of. To know something is to have the thing of fixed in mind. To know, beloved, is to perceive something as being familiar. To know is to be acquainted with something to know is to be able to, number one, distinguish, to number two, recognize. To know is to recognize as being unique or distinct, uh, and particularly toward our text. Uh, to know is to find as to discern the character or nature of. Now, I want to spend for a minute. I know I mentioned my subject was, does the devil know who we are? But I'd like to add a question, amen. Right. How could the devil not know yeah. who we are? I, I'm going to get to does the devil know uh -huh. who we are. Preach, but I want to stop and interject, well, how could the devil not know Preach, who we are? He's called the devil from the Greek false accuser. He delights in accusing the saved of sins that have been forgiven. His name also is Satan from the Hebrew, the adversary. Peter spoke of the devil and Satan, the adversary. In 1 Peter 5, in verse number 8, he said, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, 
walking about, uh, seeking whom he may devour, amen. Uh, that Satan, amen, uh, was a great, and let me, let me tell you that does the devil know who we are, but first of all, how does the devil not know uh, who we are uh, with great uncertainty that one could even imagine that the devil being of such cognitive power and, and such ability and, and reason and, 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 and uh, perception that, uh, that the devil or his agents uh, could not, come on church, uh, possibly not understand understand, possibly not con con comprehend, uh, possibly not grasp. Uh, how can the devil not phantom, brother mine? Uh, how can the devil not perceive, uh, church, who we are? With all his power and all his authority. In Luke chapter 4 and verse number 6. Somebody talked about him taking Jesus up to a, a ceiling high mountain, amen. I'm going to Luke chapter 4 right? and verse number 6. Uh, the devil had some knowledge. The uh, devil had some authority. The devil had some reasoning ability. It's impossible to assume that the devil doesn't know uh, who we are uh, in Luke. Four uh, and verse number six, uh, the Bible says, and the devil said unto him, uh, All power uh, and will be God, I will give thee, uh, and the glory of them, uh, for that is delivered unto me, uh, and to whomever I will give it. It's uh, impossible to believe that I know the devil has power, because you can't give away power that you got some power. In Second Thessalonians uh, 2 and verse 9, even him, uh, who's coming uh, is after the workings of Satan uh, with all the power uh, and signs uh, in line with the devil knows who we are, amen. The devil, how can possibly uh, what is this question this brother has given me? How could the devil not know who we are? Oh, preacher, preacher. Oh, yes, sir. Think about it, my son. Ephesians 6. Put on the whole armor of God. Might uh, be stand against the wiles of the devil, for we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, uh, against the dark, the rulers of the darkness of wealth, this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, the devil knows, uh, and how could it be he can know who we are? All right, all right, my good. The devil has some power. The devil knows the word of God, amen. In Matthew chapter 4, in verse number 5, Brother Hugh, what I need to read in here. Then the devil take it up. I'm going to ask this question. Does the devil know who we are? I'm going to first find out that it's, it's unreasonable to think. Uh, how could the devil not know who we are? In Matthew 4 and uh, verse number 5, uh, the Bible says what right? Then the devil taking them up, taking him up into the holy city, then to a holy city, and set him on the pinnacle, set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Come on, and said unto him, and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, cast thyself down, for it is written. You see, the devil yes, knows the word yes. of the living God. The devil said, is it written? Yeah. He shall give his, shall angels, give his charge. angels charge. He was quoting Psalm 91, yeah. verse 11 and 12. Yeah. The devil knows the word of God. Amen. He has the power. Yeah. He has the cognitive reasonable ability to know who you are. And if he doesn't know who you are, he's got him preachers that can help him know. All right. Second Corinthians 11 and 13. But such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into, into the, the apostles, apostles of Christ. Christ. Come on. And, and no, no marvel. marvel. 
forsake himself, himself and transform. If he don't know who you are, he has ministers that will help him find out, amen. Uh, it says even Satan himself uh, is transformed come into on, an angel of an light. Angel light ray. Therefore, it Therefore, is no great thing. It is no great thing if his ministers uh, if also. His minister. Also be transformed. Also be transformed. As the ministers Listen, of Listen, if he don't have the resources to find out who you are, he's got imps uh -huh. that will help you out, uh -huh. help him out. Yeah. Yeah. You see, the devil is so smart and so cunning. Yeah. You know, we talk in educational terms about Bloom's taxonomy, amen. Let me tell you what that is. It's a, it's a code that educators use. Uh, it's a code to, to helping young people understand how to reason, how to uh, operate, how to uh, 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 evaluate, how to synthesize information that they receive. Well, I'm going to let you know that the, the, does the devil know who are, uh, we are? How can he not know we are? The right. devil on Bloom's taxonomy is on a high scale, amen. Uh, you taste knowledge of it takes comprehension, it takes application, it takes analysis, uh, it takes synthesis, it takes evaluation, and the devil's got all of it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You'll get knowledge. Comprehend what you're doing, amen. And then you'll get into application. You see, I'm going to show you this morning, the devil, the devil got to know who you are. He's been in the business a long time. Been here a long time. He comprehends the information. He makes application and may even fight. Uh, amen. Uh, he got the uh, waves and he's been walking the earth for a long time. I'm going to show you that. He has a knowledge, analysis of, of what, you, uh, what you're doing and how many women you run around, how many things you caught up in. Just, uh, amen. He got application. Uh, he just deals with analysis and then synthesis. He brings in all the information he knows about you and then he evaluates who you are. How can the devil not know who we are? He's smart. He's cunning. He's baffling. Amen. He has authority and has resources. And let me show you, the devil's been around doing this thing a long time. Get for me, Job chapter 1. Come on, I need some preachers reading. Job chapter 1, uh, verses 6 and 7, amen. Let me tell you, when the, when the earth began, uh, in the beginning of time, let me tell you, the, the devil was there. Now there was a when day the sons of God when the sons of God all came to present the themselves of before God, the Lord. Hold on, Brother Trump. When the sons of God went to appear before God, the devil was there. Brother Lewis, uh, when it came to Jesus and his ministerial temptation, uh, the devil was there, man. At the end of time, uh, the devil will be there. Yeah. All right. Preach, sir. Preach. Job 1, 6. Now there was a day. What? When Come the on. sons of God came the to present themselves God before the Lord, came and Satan came also with among them. The, the who? And Satan came and also Satan among came them. Also among them, right? And the Lord said unto Satan, said unto Whence Satan, cometh thou? Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered and the Lord, Satan and said, answered the Lord, From going to and fro I've in been the earth. Going to, I'm trying to tell you, the devil's been here a long time. Yeah, if he great. does not know who we are, he ought to. The Bible says with Satan, uh, Satan then answered the Lord and said, come on. Has thou considered my servant Job? No, I don't want to go there. I'll get back up now. I'm in verse number seven. Uh, then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going, going to, to and fro on, in I've the earth. I've been to and fro. Come on. And from walking up and, and down I've in it. And been walking up and down yeah. in it. The devil has been observing us. A long time. So when you ask the question, does the devil know who we are? It can't be because of a limitation of his authority. It can't be that he has not always been around. It can't be because of his lack of cognitive 
a reasoning ability. In Matthew 4, he's the devil. In Matthew 13, he's our enemy. In Matthew and Mark 1, He's called Satan. Uh, in Matthew 12, uh, he's called the strong man. Uh, in Matthew, John chapter 8, uh, he's a murderer. In John chapter 8, uh, he's a liar. In John chapter 12, he's a ruler of this world. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 4, he's a god of this world. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 6, uh, he's the elder. In Revelation 12, uh, he's the servant. Uh, in 1 Thessalonians 3, uh, he's the tempter. In 1 Peter 8, uh, he's the adversary. In Revelation 9, he's an angel of Artemis Pitar. In Revelation 12, he's a great red dragon. In Mark chapter 12, Matthew 12, he's Beelzebub. In Revelation 12, he's the accuser of our brethren. So in what sense does the devil not know you? Well, we, we got to go to the text. Revelation, the Acts chapter 19, and verse 15, it's not his limitation why he may not know you. It's not his cognitive lacking that he hasn't figured out what you are and what you do, amen. It's not because he can't reason and phantom who you are. It's another sense uh, in which the devil does not know you. The spirit said, the evil spirit said, Jesus I know. And Paul I know. And Paul, I know. But who are ye? Let me, let me tell you, church, you know why, Jesus, why the devil may not know you? Because he don't know you like he knows Jesus. All right. John chapter 3. I need some more preachers. I need some readers here. Help me get back to California, amen. In John chapter 3 uh, and verse number 1, uh, the Bible says what? There was a man. There was a man of of the Pharisees, of the Pharisees, named Nicodemus, a ruler Nicodemus of the Jews. Nicodemus, the ruler of the Jews. The same came to the Jesus same by came night. To Jesus and by said night. unto him, and Rabbi. Said unto him, Rabbi. We know that thou art a teacher thou come from God. A teacher from God. For no man, man can do these miracles. See that thou do it. Wait a minute. The devil knew beyond question. Because I'm, I'm going to show you that Greek word in our text is gnosko. Second Timothy 2.19. Bible says the foundation of God stand sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth. Him, I'm just giving you where it's used. John chapter 8, verse 32. If you continue in my word, then all you my disciples of thee, ye shall know yes, the truth. John chapter 10, when Jesus said, I know my sheep. Oh, yeah. That's Gnosko. That's the evil spirit, the devil knows Jesus for what Jesus had done. No man can do these things. Let's go. Be with him. Many other signs did Jesus All right. in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. In this book, but these are written. But they are written that ye might believe. That you might believe that Jesus that is the Jesus, Christ. What I'm trying to tell you, Gnosko, is something you know yes, sir. All right. through what the character. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let some of us know the devil may not know you because he's observed what you do. There was no doubt about who and what Jesus was. I see my time and I'm, I'm going to be right on time. 
In Matthew 27 and verse number 15, Bible, there was no doubt about knowing Jesus. Jesus, when he had cried again uh, with a loud verse, gilded up the ghost, uh, behold, the temple of the veil was rent in twain uh, from top to bottom, uh, and the earth did quake, uh, and the rocks rent, uh, and the graves were opened. Uh, many bodies of the saints uh, which slept rose. Uh, it came to the graves uh, after the resurrection, went into the holy city, and appeared to many, and when the centurion, uh, they that were with him, uh, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake and those things uh, that were done. They feared greatly, saying, Surely, Surely this is, this, this was, is and was the Son of God. You know how he knew Paul? Because he, he said, Jesus I know. And, and, and the Greek word switches. Paul I'm acquainted with. I just want you to know it's a different SP to my, but it still means a uh, young man something and something that you are sure that you know that Paul, all they had to do in that city was to take a handkerchief, to take an apron. Paul did not have to be there. Paul did not have to speak to anybody. Paul didn't have to show up. Uh, the devils came out of folk, amen, uh, just by looking uh, and holding the apron of Paul. All right, y'all. All right, preach that. Preach that. I'm, I'm almost done. You know why the devil don't know some of us? Because, see, we preach one thing one place. And we preach something. The devil don't know you. We hang out with sound brethren in April. By June, we among Herod tips. The devil may not. The devil may not know you. That's the sense. It ain't his limitation. It ain't his cognitive ability. It is not his lack of discernment is what he observed that you do. Yes, sir. That's it. Oh, preach that. Preach that. Get from me, Hebrews 2. Start at verse number 1. Hey, Brother Williams, come to close. I got five minutes. You only have to give me nothing. I got to drop it while it's hot. All right, yeah. Too many in our brotherhood. You might be known by your congregation. You might have some, uh, some, some, some characteristic among the brotherhood. But it might be that the devil don't know who you are. You see, you see these sons of Siva. I, won't, I didn't call Hebrews chapter 2. I need to read that. I'm, Brother William's going to be coming down from this pulpit. Hebrews chapter 2, let me, let me tell you something. That at that, that time, the, the miracles coast confirmed who was the word and who was on the side of God. Yes, sir. Amen. I don't have to tell you about Elijah showing up. Right. Saying, how, how long hold ye between two opinions? Yes, if the Lord be God. Right. See, see, if you were a real gospel preacher, you would not give heretics a platform. You see what Brother Williams has a problem with? I have a problem with, uh, I knew for a false prophet uh, in the Old Testament, the penalty was death. And we, we got brethren that give them platforms of influence and make a way for their message. Hebrews chapter 2, come on, read. I need it. Therefore, we ought to give the earnest. We might give the honest. I'm coming down. Come on. Thing which we have heard, which we have heard, lest at any time, lest at any time, we should let them slip. We let them slip. Right. For if the word for had been spoken the by word, angels, yeah. 
was steadfast, was steadfast and every transgression and every transgression and disobedience, and disobedience received a just, received a just recompense, recompense of, reward. of reward. Come on! How, shall we escape How can we escape if we neglect you so might great a salvation? fool us? But you won't fool the devil. He knows where you hanging out. He knows what side. You know why them boys got in trouble? Because you can't fight the devil on his side. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Praise him. Praise him. That's why the evil spirit said, I know Jesus, I know Paul. You ain't you ain't on that side. Uh -huh. I can beat you up. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And when Jesus said, He that gathereth with me. Is, who, he that gathered not with me, I didn't read that one, is against. You can't float in the middle, preacher. You can't hide among sound brethren. Okay? Because the devil has helped us identify you. What did, what did Hebrews 2 say? Brother Williams is coming down. Come on. How shall we escape? How shall we escape? If we neglect so great we salvation. If we neglect so great which at the first, which at the first, began to be spoken, began by the Lord. spoken by, by who? Began to be spoken, spoken by, by the Lord. Lord. Come on! And was confirmed, which was confirmed. And the tell you, see, Jesus and Paul were confirmed yeah. to be men of God yes, by the miracles. Amen. Now we know miracles, Brother Strauss, are not existing today, so we can determine. Who is who? Because Jesus said you shall know them by their fruit. fruit. You hanging out with sound brethren and then over here you making platform for false prophets. Guess what? The Amen. devil knows who you, you are. Amen. Let me tell you, give the characteristic. I got one minute. I'm going to give the characteristic of preachers where that the devil do know. Amen. In that verse number Exodus chapter 32, verse 25, when Moses saw that the people were naked. Amen. Uh, it says Moses stood in the gate of the ground. Said, who's on the Lord? Side, amen. Uh, you want to know, uh, well, how can I identify these preachers where, where the Bible uh, is explicit uh, in, in identifying uh, who are men uh, on the right side, amen. If I look at Acts chapter 15 uh, and verse number 25, book says, it seems to us, uh, being of similar one accord, uh, sin told them in unto you, uh, with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, how did I know I, that, that, that the devil knew them, amen. Men who have hazarded uh, their lives lives uh, for the name uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, how can I know? Uh, well, in Acts chapter 16 uh, and verse number 17, uh, the same followed Paul uh, and us crying, uh, saying these men uh, are servants of the high, most high God. Uh, we'll show you uh, the way of salvation. Uh, that's how you know. Uh, uh, that's how the devil knows who you are. All right, sir. Amen. All right, sir. Right. Second Corinthians 4. Seeing we have this ministry, we seem not to have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, yeah. not walking in craftiness, uh, nor handling of the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation uh, of the truth, uh, committing ourselves, uh, every man's conscience, uh, in the sight of God. Uh, if our gospel be hid, uh, it is hid in the lost, uh, whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them uh, which believe not. Uh, last the light uh, of the glorious gospel of Christ uh, should shine unto them. Now watch this, how you identify these men, who the devil knows. Uh, verse 8, uh, there was trouble on every side, yet not distressed. We're perplexed. Uh, not in the cell. We're persecuted, uh, but not, not forsaken. We're cast down, but not but destroyed. Not destroyed. Yeah. Always bearing it about in the body, the dying, the dying of the Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, that, that the, the life also, also of Jesus Christ. might Come be made on. manifest in our bodies. In our bodies, right? For we which live are we always live delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. Delivered Unto death, come on. For Jesus' For sake, Jesus that, sake the life also that the life also of Jesus, of Jesus might be made manifest, be made manifest in, our mortal in our mortal flesh. That's how the devil knows you. Thank you. Now, some of us, the devil don't know. <laughs> amen. Amen. Let's church say amen. amen.
you're here, just start asking more. It takes more than God authenticating you being a gospel preacher. The devil knows if you're really one. By what you are willing to do for him. It's time to get some game. So let me go use the name of Jesus so I can come up. We got preachers now. It's all about money. Ain't going to hazard life, family, church, nothing for Christ. Going to keep driving that fine car. Let me stop. I'm done with you. If you're not a Christian, come down here and begin to pray. You come by believing it with all your heart. You come by repenting of your sins. Luke 13, 3 and 5. Book says, I tell you me, uh, except ye repent, uh, ye shall all likewise perish. Amen. You must confess Christ, uh, the sweetest name uh, on mortal tongue. Amen. I remember repentance. It's all of us. Acts 17, 30. Brother Hubert, at the time of this ignorance, uh, uh, God weep that. But now, that's right now, God commands all men everywhere to, repent. to what? Repent. Well, you you floating on half of a, you floating in the middle. There is no middle ground. All right. There is no neutral position. You've got false prophets tearing up churches of Christ everywhere. Yes, God needs a real preacher. Yes, sir. Amen. You come by, you can baptize them all. God will add you to the church. Yes, sir. The only time yes, sir. you can read about it in the Word of God. Yes, May God bless you. Let's stand at this time. Let's sing some songs of deliverance. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Or are you fully trusted in His grace? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the blood? In the soul? Cleansing blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. All your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood? Thank you for your attentiveness. Brother Williams, I ain't upset at nobody. I just know that church is being torn up and torn asunder. I just heard Brother Chris Mitchell out here in Houston just tore up that church that we warned them not to hire him. Now, now, now y'all know D.C. I'm calling names and taking tickets, and you can tell them I said it. I warned about that brother th this time last year. <laughs> and those elders still hired him.